Welcome to another advanced Excel video. So this is going to be a quickish example of building a waterfall chart, uh, which you can see I've got the completed product here, but we're going to step through it uh, on a blank tab. So a waterfall charts are really useful for demonstrating how you get from a beginning to an end. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of steps along the way and it can be particularly useful in uh, financial analysis. You can do some nice charts where you say, you know, 2017 uh, EPS or EBITDA or free cash flow is X and by 2020 and maybe each of these instead of item one, it's a year, maybe, you know, it's 2017 and then in 2018, you're going to get an extra 25. In 2019 another 35 you step forward and you step forward and you show how you get from from where you are now to where you're going to go and why these can be very powerful charts so I'm, so we're going to go through this pretty quickly uh, it's pretty straightforward uh, there's a few nuances with the actual chart because obviously there is no waterfall chart in excel so basically we use a stacked uh, column chart so we just need we just need some data to begin with and it doesn't really matter what you use. I'm just using generic labelings, obviously. Um, it can take some creativity to even realize that it's the appropriate time to use a waterfall chart. But once you do, you're gonna really impress some people. You know, if they aren't used to seeing waterfall charts, I'm just putting in, it's just random data, it could be anything. Uh, this last one, actually, we just equal to the, uh, to the last item because we want to just show that that's how you step up to that point um and so that's that we're gonna we're gonna end on where the final one ends so now we need to base it and we'll need a delta and we'll just format my data labels a little bit um i guess i, I like to use shortcut keys but it may be better for me to use the mouse a bit more since you can't see what I'm typing though. So when we do the base, we really are just taking the total and subtracting the delta. And I realize that doesn't make sense right now, but it will. And we can just paste the, we can just paste it all down. And the delta is really just uh, on the total column. It's the one less the one before it. So that should be 25, the next one should be 35, 25, 75. Uh, and we don't need anything here or here. So that's our data setup. You can see there's actually only um, six, there's only 12 items that we've actually input. These are, these are formulas, basing it and creating the deltas. And now what we're gonna wanna do is insert a column chart uh, which will actually be a stacked column chart, but it's actually going to be easier if we select the data before we before we build it. Uh, so there we've got our you know basic chart, and you can sort of see how this is going to develop into the chart that I showed you at the start of the video. And I mean, at this point, we've basically done it. It's just it's just chart formatting. But at the end of the day, chart formatting is very important in Excel. And you know, anytime when I'm at work, if I ever am, am given a chart that's that's in one of these default styles, uh, even if it's one of these, you know, color coding, and never use these ones. They're terrible, very ugly, they're very unattractive, they don't add any value, and they're distracting. You want to keep your charts pretty crisp and pretty simple, but you also want to you want to shy away from the base color codes because it, I mean, everyone knows that you make charts in Excel, but that doesn't mean that you want it to look that obvious. You want to make it look like you made this chart yourself. So what we're going to do first of all is change the column width. I find the, the it's too distracting. There's too much in between here. We're just going to reduce it. I think 50 is nice. 30 is okay as well. But I like these nice fat columns. They really, they're the same widths as the text and you know, it's good like that. I tend to shy away from, um, from the vertical axis grid line bars. 
I think that's personal. I think you, it depends on the data. It depends on how uh, long the access is and how important it is to know that this point here lines up with this 250. Personally, I think the chart looks a lot cleaner without it. I'd also tend to remove uh, remove the border as well, which is a format chart area, uh, border, no line. That's how we remove that outside border. It's nice. Uh, if, if, this were if these were dollars, we could also format um, under the number currency. And we're not going to want any decimal points because we're using whole dollars. And now our dollars, it could be whatever, whatever you're using. And possibly, you know, it's always good to describe your data. So we're going to use a rotated title. And we're just going to say, uh, you know, maybe this is uh, EBITDA, which is and it'll be dollars and in millions you want you always want to describe your data what what currency is it in currency what's the unit what is what are we describing you want to be as descriptive as possible in your labels so now we're going to shy away from the color code the traditional color code so for fill we're going to switch we're going to use a nice dark gray we're going to give it a border um, I'm actually going to tone the gray down, but this is all obviously personal preference. And typically, you know, when I'm doing these waterfall charts, I quite like to use green when it's an increase and red when it's a decrease. And you'll see not in this video because we're actually not using any uh, decreases uh, because that's actually more of a challenging chart uh, to build. And so we'll do that in the next video. Um, but for now, we'll keep it simple and just do decreases, or sorry, just do increases. We're going to add some data, add, add some data labels. And since we formatted our axis in dollars, that means that each of these columns is also in dollars, which means these data labels should also be in dollars. So we'll go number, currency, again, we need no decimal places. And personally, I actually prefer to have these just above and you'll see actually when we do the uh, more advanced chart with the up and the down bars i like to do them above when it's going up and below when it's going down it's personal preference we'll add some data labels on the main bars with the same number formatting currency zero and we're only going to need two of them and you'll see why in a minute in a minute but we're going to put those up there looks great and now we're going to start deleting. So to delete um, these, it's pretty straightforward. You can see you click it once, it selects them all. Just click it again and then press delete. And that's how you can get rid of one thing. It's the same thing that we're going to do now. We're going to remove these under these bars below here. But the way we do it is we don't actually remove the data. You don't delete it. You simply double click the column. And I use control one to bring up the format data panel. Um, you can also do a right click, but control one is a lot smoother. And we want to use keyboard shortcuts as much as we can when we use Excel. It, it ends up being a lot faster. So we're going to remove the fill by saying no fill. And since we added a border, we're going to say no border. And we're going to step through and we're going to do them all. You can see I didn't even have to click off. I just selected the next one in line, remove the fill, remove the border, select the next one in line. No, none of those. And there you go, you have a very good looking uh, waterfall chart. And interestingly enough, and this is a good force, this is a good habit to get into, but you really wanna, you really wanna um, color, start color coding your hard codes, which are data entry versus your formulas. So you can see everything in black here is a formula and everything in blue, by excluding the data labels, of course, is actually a formula. And what that means is I know, as soon as I look at this data set, I know that if I wanna make changes to it, I only have to make them within these blue boxes. So let's say that we, we learn that item four is actually 300, which will create $125 data. You can see the chart is dynamic. It can, it can accept that. Now you do lose a little bit of your formatting because we manually moved, um, these data labels and so it will it can mess up your chart a little bit but it's nothing major and it's fairly dynamic and now you've got a good waterfall chart and the beauty is if you've made this once you know you can actually just copy and paste it into another exhibit 
or another file and you know that you just need to change this data and maybe this is data that isn't a hard code maybe it actually links to your financial model and you've got some data and you say okay well this is actually 2017 and every year we're going to link to we're going to call it eps and now we're going to link these to our financial model and build it like that so there's a lot of things you can do with the chart like this i definitely recommend again building it once getting the feel for it if you haven't before and and i also recommend watching the next video in the series which is going to be the more advanced waterfall chart which includes uh, both positive increases and negative increases and you'll see it's, it's pretty straightforward but it just it's an extra level of complexity and so we'll get into that next video thanks for checking it out guys as always like the video if you like it subscribe if you want to see more stay tuned for the next one thanks for checking out excel pro